A powerful storm system to bring hurricane force wind gusts, heavy rain, and big snow totals for some. Welcome in, everybody. Happy Wednesday, December 17th, and tracking a pretty potent storm system on the way for many of us already entering the Pacific Northwest, and then we'll cross the country, bringing many of those hazards, and uh, also going to get a quick look at that Christmas forecast at the end of the video. If you're new to the channel, though, welcome. My name's Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Doing all that's free, doesn't cost you a penny. All it does is uh, help the channel find more people and help keep you weather-wise as we continue working on through the winter season. All right, let's dive right on into that forecast. And next to me, this is the latest run of our European computer model and uh, showing uh, max wind gusts. And you can see it's kind of crossing the country or will do so over the next couple of days. Already bringing those very gusty winds into the northwestern part of the country through the plains and then eventually even up through the eastern seaboard where, yeah, at least tropical storm force uh, wind gusts uh, for others, even hurricane force gusts going to be a possibility out of this storm system. Now, let's dive into what's causing this a little bit. Uh, we've got a stout piece of mid-level energy working through the PNW. This is our mid-level vorticity map or basically our mid-level spin map. And you can definitely see we've got a lot of that spin on going there into the Pacific North. Northwest. You can see that with the brighter colors on your map. That will continue to work on through. It's going to already help to fuel a uh, storm system here at the surface. You've got the spin in the upper levels. That helps to lead to cyclogenesis down here where we live. And uh, you can see all that spin going to continue to cross the Rockies, then really get going and uh, likely hit a maximum here in energy over the plains. That's where some of those hurricane force wind gusts are going to be uh, the highest of likelihoods uh, in that part of the country. And then works through the Midwest, through the Ohio Valley and up through the Northeast. This would be by your Friday. So right now, Wednesday, working into the PNW for your Thursday into the Plains and then by Friday into the Northeast and bringing those hazards with them. In fact, you can already see it getting going on our radar imagery. We've got a lot of rain, a lot of snow out here into the northern Rockies. All that is going to continue to slide eastward over the coming days. Although mostly rain for those of us east of the Rockies, there will be some big snow on the backside of this as well in the uh, form of lake effect snow. So definitely a lot on the way. All right, that's a quick summary of it. That's a quick look at the storm system. Let's go ahead and uh, dive into it a little bit more in depth and time this out for your state and kind of talk about those possible hazards. All right, let's sign this system out just on a broad scale view. We're going to use the NAM model and uh, give you the latest. So by this afternoon, the center of low pressure with this storm system, really going to start cranking up here uh, as it exits the Rockies. You can see we've got a lot of mountain snow. We've got a lot of lower elevation rainfall. Remember, we've started to warm up a lot recently thanks to this high pressure off the eastern seaboard, really helping to bring that southerly flow back into the picture. So uh, this won't be a big snowstorm for most folks outside of the Great Lakes where uh, that back in cold air is going to wrap around over the warmer waters and uh, give us some lake effect snow. But time to get out. I think the bigger story is going to be the wind that this system brings and for some the snow. But by late tonight into, uh, well, we'll just call it late tonight. How about that? Or at least into this evening and then towards the midnight hour, that low pressure moving off towards uh, kind of the U.S. Canadian border, really paralleling it as it looks throughout the overnight hours. And we will see likely blizzard conditions at this back end and northerly side of, of uh, the snow shield. You see a lot of wind going on. It's going to be helping to blow the snow around. So that and then further south where we don't have snow, you're still going to get the wind and some mighty high wind gusts. We'll show that to you here next up. But let's keep it moving along. And you can see by the time we're getting into the evening, uh, this is really late tonight into early tomorrow morning. So about 4 a.m. Eastern time, you can see that back end shield of snow continuing to bring potentially blizzard like conditions, mostly rain with some snow trying to mix in here on the front side through the uh, Twin Cities and uh, up through uh, portions of Wisconsin and even into the UP of Michigan by early tomorrow morning. But then comes that back inside of snow. Remember, that's going to be where we have uh, some of the strongest winds and some of that white stuff flying around. So obviously uh, going to have low visibility concerns tomorrow through much of the Dakotas, at least North Dakota, uh, Northern South Dakota and into Minnesota. This is at uh, 18Z Thursday, so around 1 o'clock or so tomorrow afternoon. Then the storm continues to work east. I think it's going to be a pretty rainy day for much of the southeast and mid-Atlantic. We've got the actual frontal rain here uh, with this uh, surface trough. That's where our cold front is located. That's going to fire off uh, a shield of rain, maybe even a couple rumbles of thunder. Wouldn't even be shocked to see a little bit of severe weather. Main threat, though, would be strong straight-line winds. And uh, then we kind of get this batch of moisture that gets caught up out of the Gulf and the Atlantic out in front of the uh, main frontal system. 
system. Uh, that could bring a pretty soggy day through the Mid-Atlantic, including the Carolinas down into Georgia and even through the Florida Panhandle. Then you go later into Thursday, and this is right around midnight going into Friday. We've got a heavy batch of rain working into the northeast and in New England. The wind's going to start to pick up back in snow cranking into uh, northern Michigan there, that being the Upper Peninsula and the Northern Mitten, as well as uh, Northern Wisconsin, seeing some of that snow work on through. That would be overnight Thursday into Friday. Here we go, Friday morning, rocking and rolling in New England. Strong winds coming in off the Atlantic. Uh, fire hose of moisture working in as well. We'll watch for some flooding concerns. Watch for the winds to pick up. And then back in lake effect snow, going to start to work into uh, the usual suspect areas, the snow belt there of northeastern Ohio through the Erie area, Buffalo, uh, the Tug Hill going to pick up on some good snow in and around the Finger Lakes and even the higher terrains there of the interior of the northeast before you see another little northern stream piece of energy could bring some Midwest and interior northeast snow by the end of this weekend. All right, that's a quick summary of what the storm's going to look like. Let's talk about uh, the wind a little bit more in depth and then talk about the potential snowfall totals. And we'll kind of end things out with what's to come between now and Christmas. As I mentioned, this is going to be a pretty big story in the wind department with this system starting really now through this afternoon. These are max wind gusts. Uh, according to our European model, and I think it's really onto something. You can see we've got uh, some of these max numbers getting up near 70 to even 80 mile an hour uh, in that range into the higher um, terrains of Montana, really through much of the northern Rockies throughout this afternoon and evening. As we go deeper into the overnight and uh, getting into tomorrow morning and afternoon for your Thursday, rocking and rolling into the northern plains, the Dakotas, down into Nebraska, into Kansas, the heartland of the United States here, could be gusting at 60 miles an hour, up to even 70 for some of us. So yeah, sure enough, going to be a very breezy one there for your Thursday. You'll need to definitely tie the Santas down. Hopefully they don't go uh, floating away with any of those outdoor decorations. Then by the time we're getting into Friday morning, uh, it starts to pick up really into the mid-Atlantic, into the Midwest as well. I think the high country of Appalachia could see easily 40 to 50, maybe even 60 mile an hour wind gusts with this system as it rolls on through. Like I said, this is around Friday morning. Also picking up through the mid-Atlantic into the Delmarva, 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts. Uh, same thing for Philadelphia, could be gusting 50 to 60. Coastal New Jersey finding some numbers right around 60 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts here for your Friday morning. By the time we get to Friday afternoon, folks, uh, things go from bad to worse into New England. You're going to see these numbers really start to crank up as the low-level jet really accelerates in off the Atlantic. It's also, remember, bringing in that atmospheric river of moisture, so we'll need to watch for some flooding there into New England. But Friday morning through the afternoon looks to be the worst ever from Long Island up to Boston, Providence, Hartford, all the way up into the higher terrains there of uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and up into Maine. So definitely a breezy one for our Friday afternoon. Would not be surprised to see some power outages and it stays breezy into the overnight of Friday into Saturday as that energy continues to work on through. And another shot of cold air starts to also take over for New England. Remember, everyone's been talking about the warm up, but that doesn't mean it'll be warm the entire time. And for some of us, this warm up on the way, uh, probably not even all that much of one into New England with this continued active track that's bringing the wind here, some of that lake effect snow and some of that heavy rain. All right, that's the wind side of this system. Also some snow on the way. Exactly how much and who could see the most? Well, let's take a look at the data. Well, December started quite snowy for the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the Northern Plains, and the interior of the Northeast, but we're switching it up. It's now a time to bring some of those heaviest snowfall totals out into the West Coast, and sure enough, the mountains of Washington State are going to easily get pounded here. We're going to be counting the totals in feet. You can see the scale there at the bottom of your screen, and some of the numbers here are going to go over the scale into the higher terrain. So if you have a ski trip planned out here into Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, even out towards Yellowstone, uh, you are in plenty of luck, as you can see out this part of the country. Definitely going to cash in on some of those higher totals. Now, for friends out into Montana and into the Dakotas, in fact, uh, we'll kind of switch to this map so you can see it a little bit better. You notice the totals up here near the Canadian line, it's not super high. I mean, this is, you know, very manageable for this part of the country. However, with the wind gust I showed you, that's going to bring blizzard conditions, kind of a combination here of not a lot of snow, but with a lot of wind, that's all you need to get those blizzard conditions. So be that um, as it may to you and uh, keep it in mind. Definitely, I would avoid travel if you can here into especially northern North Dakota and then up through northern Minnesota there, even into the beak there uh, towards Ely, I believe is how you say that town. I've had uh, that one corrected before, so hopefully my brain is uh, remembering the correct pronunciation properly. 
All right, now uh, we'll bring it down into the Midwest. Not a lot, but we are going to get some lake effect snow on the back end of this, into the upper peninsula, and into the western shorelines of Michigan. But it's more of the rich getting richer. This isn't something we haven't already seen. And this is now through Saturday morning. I see more lake effect on the way later after that period, but just now through Saturday morning, a relatively light event. Same story for the interior of the Northeast. I-95, nothing but rain and wind out of this one. Uh, but you go further inland, and I do think we could definitely get uh, some snow here into the snow belt of Ohio. And some of these numbers probably even underdone a little bit. I would expect a little bit more than this up into the Tug Hill and uh, points north here towards uh, the U.S. Canadian line and into the higher terrain of the interior of the Northeast. But either way, it's some snow, and uh, we'll take it because uh, if uh, you're wanting a white Christmas, we're going to need to hold on to as much snow as we've got on the ground as we are getting a warm up for most of us over the week ahead. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about that pattern now through Christmas, and I'll show you the projected snow depth as well on Christmas morning so you kind of can uh, gauge if you're going to see one, and if you're not, maybe how far you might have to travel to see that snow on the ground. All right, let's talk about the long range a little bit now through Christmas. What's the pattern going to throw our way? Obviously, we've discussed now through about Saturday. And uh, by the time we get to Saturday, our dip in the jet stream that brought the storm system that we're going to see is going to now be up all the way towards uh, Newfoundland and Nova Scotia at that point. So working off into the North Atlantic. And behind it, folks, honestly, it looks pretty zonal, the flow here, meaning it's just kind of from west to east across the country. It's not that exciting. It's just bringing pretty average weather. And as we go into next week, the week of Christmas, remember it's on the way by next Thursday, uh, but this is your Monday, your Tuesday, and just a big ridge taking hold over the United States. I tell you, we had a nice cold, snowy start to the month. But just in time for the holidays, this is going to get in the way for some snow lovers. Now, we've got this trough continuing out west, even uh, further west in the west coast itself. But that is going to continue to bring active weather into the PNW, the northern Rockies. I definitely think a white Christmas for the higher elevations out there uh, looking like a guarantee. Now, what we need to watch for is where does this dip back down? Now, I think right now, if you're in the central plains, you're pretty well locked in that you're going to get a pretty big ridge of high pressure bringing pretty boring and above average, or I should say boring weather and above average temperatures over the next 10 days or so. But where that dips back down on the other side is going to be a pretty key component. This is by next Wednesday. Uh, this is Christmas Eve afternoon. And notice... Hey, you still got this spiking ridge, but you're starting to see another trough try to dig back down into portions of the Northeast and the New England, and that could help to keep things cooler and maybe that snowpack in place for areas up that way. But boy, oh boy, we're going to be melting some snow down here into portions of the Midwest, it looks like, as that ridge uh, builds in. How long does it last? Well, as we look at the ensembles, it does look like after Christmas, maybe the ridge kind of tries to shift a little bit further west, but I'll tell you, still the pattern it doesn't look overly favorable for any big time East Coast winter storm now through uh, at least the couple of days following Christmas. Now, I'll tell you, anything after Christmas, I would say, is uh, kind of free game at this point. It could go either way, but now through Christmas, I think this big ridge uh, that we've kind of expected for a couple days now, probably even longer than that, looks to definitely be be the real deal. With that said, let's talk temperatures. So we've got uh, this little shot of cold air working in now. And you can see this is by Friday afternoon and into Saturday morning. Uh, we do get a shot of cooler air. It just does not last very long before that uh, warmer air tries to take over. You can see another little shot of cooler air. Uh, this is by Monday of next week into uh, Monday afternoon and Tuesday. But by the middle of the week, here's your Wednesday afternoon temperature anomalies. A lot of red, a lot of orange on the map. Those are above average to even well above average temperatures here for your Christmas Eve. And uh, here you go for Christmas uh, morning and Christmas afternoon in the temperature anomaly department. I mean, folks, that <laughs> those are warm temperatures over the heart of the country. Uh, really 90% of the country in above average temperatures, except for Alaska looks to be cold this Christmas. I would say New England looking at least chilly and then obviously into the PNW. But everywhere else, yeah, boy, oh boy, heat miser won this year, uh, unfortunately for all of our snow fans. With that said, though, we have gotten a lot of snow already. So will there still be snow on the ground? Could you even see it flying for Christmas Day? Well, let's briefly take a look at the chances for that. All right, let's talk about the chances for new snow to fall between now and Christmas. And the highest probabilities are going to be in, well, those areas that we showed you the troughing and the below average temperatures. Now, obviously, right now, we've got the snow we've already talked about into the uh, Rockies. And then it is going to also work through portions of uh, the Northern Plains, the Midwest, and into the Northeast. 
We've already discussed that. What about the next chance? Well, here's that little clip where I showed you earlier on in the video that could also add some more snow into the interior of the Northeast up through uh, Eastern Canada as well. Definitely could get some snow out of that. But other than that, new chances continue out into the Northern Rockies. And there is a signal I will mention right around Tuesday to Wednesday of next week that we could get another batch of snow with that dip in the jet. Like I said, over into the Northeast, into the New England states, can that dip stay there? It kind of looked like it in the models that could provide another snow chance right before Christmas. This would be, uh, like I said, around uh, Tuesday to Wednesday of next week. That would get us through Christmas Eve. Could maybe see some Christmas Eve flakes flying, especially upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and uh, maybe surrounding areas. We'll see how well it does. And then that gets us all the way through Christmas afternoon here and more snow likely into the Rockies. So with that said, who has the highest chance of seeing snow on the ground Christmas morning? Well, this is the European ensembles and uh, this includes snow that's already fallen this year. So what's on the ground out there now with uh, melting between now and Christmas and new snow to fall? This is who has the highest chance of seeing it on the ground. And it's going to be, well, you guessed it, the same areas into the Rockies from the Sierra Nevadas uh, and uh, the Cascades, really much of the Western mountains of the United States looking pretty good. Also portions of the Midwest, I think in uh, North Dakota, uh, maybe Minneapolis northbound and up into Northern Michigan where there's a lot of lake effect already on the ground out there that could hold strong. And then into areas around Buffalo, upstate New York, into the interior of the Northeast. Those really look to be the best pla uh, places, excuse me, to see snowfall on the ground for your Christmas morning. Unfortunately, not going to have a white Christmas, I don't think, in D.C., uh, Baltimore, Philly, probably not New York City. Uh, heck, even Chicago might not have snow on the ground this Christmas. But if you're willing to take a drive far enough north or far enough west, you could find some of that uh, beautiful festive stuff on the ground, maybe even flying around. If we can time things up right uh, there, is maybe especially for Christmas Eve with that next system that I mentioned. All right, folks, that's all I've got for you on uh, this Wednesday. Again, hopefully you uh, enjoyed it. Hopefully you got some good information out of it. And uh, with that said, y'all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all next time.